Well, it's time to get ready. Church will be starting in five minutes.
Service will begin in two minutes. Two minutes, service will begin. Good morning, Life Church family. Welcome. Aren't you excited about today? I want to welcome today our online viewers and our first time visitors. My name is Cheryl Miller, and I will be your host this morning. And today is Communion Sunday. Yes. So I would like to ask those of you who are viewing online, please take a moment to grab bread, craft crackers, or some juice so you'll be ready when, communion, when we have communion today. You know, as I was thinking about this service, I thought a little bit about when I used to teach children's ministry and the kids would get kind of out of whack a little bit. And so we had this little saying sometimes, we'd say, shake it off, shake it off. I don't have no attitude, shake it off, shake it off. And I feel like that's what the Lord is saying to us today. There may be things that we're holding on to, something during the week that we've been carrying around like baggage, like a big backpack on our back. But God wants us to shake it off. So as we enter into worship today, thank you, Lord. Begin to let those things drop off. And then have your attitude towards him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, listen to this word. Psalms 139, 1 through 6. Oh, Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I am far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say before I say it. Lord, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. That's the Father that we have. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love and grace and for this service today. Oh, be with us in Jesus' name. Let's stand and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, feel free to get out of your seats. Feel free to come up to the front. We're just going to lift our highest praise to God. Give him everything this morning. This is our sacrifice of praise. I'll praise in the valley, I'll praise on the mountain, I'll praise when I'm sure, I'll praise when I'm down, I'll praise when outnumbered, praise when 
change and we have joy because of you we have joy because of who you are let's step into that this morning the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord.
today and we won't be quiet we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the lord our god is shining in this place we won't be quiet we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet we shout out to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's time for communion. Thank you, Lord. You know, as I was thinking about communion today, I was reminded of this book by Benny Johnson, The Power of Communion. And in that book, she talks about a song, and some of you have been around like me. You remember before communion, we'd sing a song, and then afterwards, we'd sing a song. And the song that she was reminded of is, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is enough power in his blood to cancel any curse, to save us from our sins, and to heal our bodies. And that power has not waned in 2,000 years. Ha, it's very much alive. Those were Benny's words. Hallelujah. Now we're going to um, have you go into a time of gathering together. But before you do that, I'm going to read this set of scriptures to remind us of why we have communion. Matthew 26, 26 through 29, and today I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new and better covenant, which ratifies the agreement and is being poured out for many as a substitutionary atonement for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Now I'd encourage you, two or three of you, maybe four, just gather together. Come, the elements are up front, on each side and in the back. And just take a few moments to pray with them, one another.
this is a move. If your heart is breaking today, and you're saying, Lord, move on me. I need a miracle. He's here today for you. Just raise your hands if that's you. If that's you, you say, I need a miracle today. I see your hands. I see your hands. If you're around somebody raising up their hands and just need a miracle today, put your hand on them. Agree with them. Declare over them that God is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just sing that chorus. There's a move, there's a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if that was you, and you feel you need just some more time, after service, there'll be a moment. You can either come to the healing teams or to the prayer teams. But don't leave today without walking out refreshed. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read Matthew 25, 35 through 40. And as you listen... Think about your giving through these scriptures. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. So when you think about the different ministries here at Life Church, you've done that. Life Essentials, food for the hungry. Prison ministry, there's some who have been going to the Youth Authority. Sozo, inner healing, intercessory prayer, the prayer change, prayer chain, life groups. All of these are ways that your giving keeps on giving. Now, you have multiple ways to give here at Life Church. The QR code right in the middle, you can hold up your phone, click on that, and you can go right to where you need to give. Online giving, mail in your gift, 
you can drop your gift off at the entrance, both entrances. Um, there are black boxes there, and you can just drop them off. Huh. Isn't God good? And how just our small gift that we give keeps on giving. Now we have an opportunity to hear about all the beautiful things that are happening here at Life Church. Let's watch the announcements. is about raising up believers to engage their heart and equip their minds to know God and to know themselves so that they can be effective where they're called. Do you want to see what it's all about? Then you need to come to our preview night on Tuesday the 23rd where you'll get to experience the culture of life school and get a taste of what this fall school year could look like. Seating is limited, so be sure to reserve your free ticket online at lifeschoolsalem.com by clicking on the Preview Night button. In a couple of weeks, we have a jam-packed weekend of events that you won't want to miss out on. On Friday the 19th, we have our Tomorrow's Champions Academy fundraiser. Details and tickets are available on the events page of our website. Then, on Saturday the 20th, we have our Worship Through Movement and Flags workshop. Please arrive by 9.45 a.m. Also happening on the 20th is our Youth Spring Hiking Trip. We're meeting in the Life Training Center parking lot at noon. And finally, on Sunday the 21st, we're having our usher training right after service. If you want to get involved in this ministry, then please mark your calendars for this training. Next Wednesday the 17th, we want to extend the opportunity to anyone who feels led to come and pray through the Life Training Center. From 6.30 to 8 p.m. on the 17th, we'll be covering our future wholeness wing and the ministries that will take place in it in prayer. There will also be a chance to write prophetic words on the wall studs. No need to sign up, just come be a part of praying in to what God is doing on the Life Church campus. Ladies, we need to know if you're planning on joining us for the Radiate event happening this Wednesday the 10th. Starting at 6.30 p.m. here in the upper room, we'll share dinner, good company, and we'll learn about what's happening in Salem. Let us know if you're coming by signing up on the events page of our website today. Don't forget to stop by the featured area today to get more information on our healing ministry team, family camp registration, and our worship through movement and flags workshop, all of which will be at the featured area after service today. So stop by, ask your questions, and get involved where you feel led. Check, check. All right. Morning. How are we all doing? Good. good. It is a good morning. Um, I'm just going to get everything opened up here. Um, we got a couple things, though, that we're going to do this morning. Um, just some, we have some testimonies we want to share and just some things we want to highlight and people we want to pray for. So um, it's going to be awesome. Uh, first, so Pam Hannah's going to come up. She's going to give an announcement. And then after her gleanings, those of you who are going on the gleanings mission trip, Pam, you can come up. Uh, those of you going on the gleaning mission trip, I'm going to call you up after her. So just be ready because we're going to be praying for some of our people who are going out just to serve. Amen. 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 There you go. Hi. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to announce or bring up the thing that's happening. Um, it's a call for the nation. For the, it's a national call. Don't mess with our kids. Um, 
It's happening, it's a call even happening in the world, different, um, Peru, don't mess with our kids, tried to go in there, they shut it down. All the Peruvians came out and said, uh-uh, don't mess with our kids. So um, on the 13th of February, it is a national call. Every um, state will, people, when, well, there'll be a gathering in the state capital of every state, um, April 13th from one to three. And so we happen to be a state capital. So um, it could be important for, this, for such a time as this. It's our kids, um, it's our legacy. They, haven't, they do not have a voice. This is our time to say, uh-uh, no more. When at women's ministry, the, um, Leslie Crandall was there and she brought up and we did a prophetic act of uh, the, t uh, the lady with the tent peg. And this is a tent peg moment. And it's like, no, we're, uh-uh, this ain't happening. Uh, it's for our kids. So just to announce for April 13th from one to three, it's a state capital. Um, the regional coordinator for Oregon will be coming to radiate on, on the 10th. So she'll be talking to us. So I just, and also this is not a woman's movement. This is a, we are covering for our children. So it, um, some people are calling it an Esther movement. And the plan is to bring, have prayer hubs all over the United States. And one of our lifeboats is a prayer hub for Don't Mess With Our Kids. And Karen Coda is the leader of that. And so just to get the prayer out, we don't war with flesh and blood. It's a, it's a spiritual battle. So um, then... Wherever my brain went somewhere. Um, just, it's such a, t it will go, yes, it's a man thing. Like, it's an Esther movement. It, Esther couldn't get anywhere without Mordecai. You know, we need the guys. It's a, if you have a, a few uh, uncles and brothers, and it's not this gathering on the 13th is not just women. It's for, and we are ascending church, and we need to be sent to the capital. I don't know. I don't know. So if you come to Radiate, we'll know more. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So next, I'm going to invite the Gleanings Mission Strip to come up to the stage, please. Gleanings Mission Strip. And then leadership team, come up as well. If you're on one of our leadership teams, come up as well, because we're going to be praying for these guys. So we have a group of people who are going down to California. They are going down to the YWAM base down there, Gleanings, just to work here for this. They're leaving in a week, and they're going to be working for about a week down there. And they're going to be doing a couple different things. They're going to be helping make food uh, that is sent at the, from this YWAM base all over the world. Um, it's gone to feed orphans and widows. It goes to feed all the different ministries that are happening. Um, and then they also get to give food out while they're down there, get to minister to people. And so we're just going to bless this trip that's leaving here pretty soon as they go just to serve and just love on people, right? So we're going to ask you just to stretch out your hands as we bless them here as they get ready to leave. So, Lord, we just thank you for this group of people. God, right now, we just release your presence, God. We just release right now just the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We just speak traveling mercies as they go, Father, that you would direct their steps. You would direct their cars, God. You would send angels just to guide them and protect them as they go. And, Lord, we're just praying right now even for divine encounters on the drive down, Lord, that they, you would set them up with people who need to hear about Jesus, that you would set them up with people who need to hear about the goodness of God, about who you are and what you are planning to do. We bless their hands as they work, Father God. We bless everything they put their hands to, and we declare that it will prosper, that it will bless people. And Lord, we're believing that this is going to change lives right now. Not only their lives, Lord, but the everyone who they encounter, Father God. So we just release the presence of God, and we send them out covered, we send them out blessed, and we send them out empowered to bring the kingdom of God wherever they go. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Yeah. We just want to remind you here, as they go, be praying for them, right? Oh, come on, church. That was horrible. They feel so encouraged by that. Come on, be praying for them, right? Yeah. Come on, y'all. What you trying to do right now? Be praying for them. Give them some love and some encouragement. So, um, they're, they're leaving. They don't leave this week. They leave next week. 
um, and they're going to be gone from, they're going to be down at Gleanings from basically the 14th to the 19th. But just be praying with them. It'll be in the email so you can see it. We'll send out a Facebook reminder. We want you lifting these people up, covering them in prayer as they are going and as they are serving. Um, and then next, right now, I'm going to invite uh, Bro Drew, Pastor Bro Drew, to come on up. Give him some love. Give him a round of applause. So he has uh, just come back from his trip with Nikolai, and so he's going to share some testimonies from the trip and from what God did. And this is important because if you give in any way here, we as a church, we take 17% of every tithe that's given, and we put it towards missions and outreach and blessing the world and our community and people. And so if you give, you have sowed into the trip that him and Nikolai went on to Asia. And so we want you to hear about what God did, about how God is moving. And we are just going to use the term Asia for safety reasons. We're not going to say anything specific. Don't shout out anything specific because this is live. And there is a reason why we're not saying that, just for the safety of those who are there and because we want to go again. Amen? Amen. 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 Awesome. So I'm going to pass it off to him here. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your prayers. It's, it was an awesome time with the... Uh, uh, Nikolai. Nikolai's an amazing person. If you, have, if you haven't met him personally, you need to talk to him. He's a great guy. He's doing a fantastic job. If we can show the first photo. This is um, the church that we went to, the main church that we ministered at. Uh, Nikolai's preaching there. And if you see a lot of people, well, since we, we were there three months ago, and it's already growing. It's getting bigger. And we're just, like, amazed with that. And so, next photo. This is the class that we got opportunity to teach, Nikolai and I. We were teaching church planners. These people are planning churches all through the country, up in the hills and the villages. It's 35 people. Some of them are, are pastors. Nine of them are pastors. The rest are young people, young leaders that are candidates for church planning. We got to teach <laughs> 10, I got to teach 10 one-hour classes to these guys, <laughs> preaching all over the place. Same with Nikolai. And just feeding and helping them, and they're just enthused and powerful. And that church is amazing how they're bringing them all in and doing that. It's a three-month program. We just happen to be a week of their training for them. Next picture. There's, there's Bro Drew up there preaching. So, yeah, yeah. And it's just fun. And then I want to show you another picture. So what in the world am I picking a guy up for? Well, this guy right here, what was funny, I was praying in the morning because we're talking to people that are going up in the mountains in the most highest places. And this guy has the furthest up in the mountains in the village. And so God told me that the love of God constrains us, compels us, picks us up. And I was like, you mean that you want me to pick somebody up? I said, well, that's a good guy to pick up because he's climbing mountains every day. He only weighs about 90 pounds. So... <laughs> So I picked him up to just to say, when all else fails, not even all else fails, but when you need most, I know me in 43 years of serving the Lord, how many times has God's love just picked me up and get me through it? How many funerals have I been to or, or just um, Bible studies or, or prison ministry? God's love will pick you up. And they, he had a blast. Me and him are friends forever. One of these days, I'd like to go back and may, if I ever could have the help enough to climb up where he's at. But um, it, it'll never change. These people were just were amazing. And then the last picture. These, these people are, um, what happened is that when we were there three months ago, Nikolai, we taught, um, he taught mainly on the family foundations. It's a transforming hearts, blessing generations. Not only did he teach the class, but he taught two leaders, four leaders, to how to teach it at the same time. So these people, when we came three months later, taught the class themselves to these people. These are all graduates, the ones there. And so they're going to be going to the villages in the mountains, teaching about the blessings and the generations to come. So I just say thank you so much for that. And then also we had divine appointments, of course. When I, we were in the, the biggest city, we were in this place. And the city's all like real rough and ghetto. And then all of a sudden there's a king's palace guard. We're like, hey, let's go check it out. And while we're there, there's three Muslim young men come up to us. And they started to us for no reason. I was like, oh, sweet. And they're like, well, and, and we, were, we were just talking, and, um, and, and as they were walking off, the guy turned around, and he says, do you have any wisdom for me? Do you have any, any wisdom for me? I said, you better believe it, I do. 
I, got, I started talking about Solomon and talking about the fear of the Lord and everything else. And they were so happy and so open. They go, we're Muslims, but we're religious too. We heard of Solomon. I said, well, start reading Proverbs, bro, and you will see what can, God can do for you. And so they ended up taking a, a, a selfie and everything else afterwards. But we had divine appointments all along the way. And I just say thank you so much because these people here are making a difference. That country has less than 2% Christians. Less than 2%. It's called an unreached country. But guess what's the fastest growing religion in that country? Christianity. And we are a part of that. It's not the whole thing, but you who give and pray, we're a part of moving in a country that has not been reached yet. So thank you so much for what you guys do, and thank you so much for this time even this morning. God bless you guys. You can give it to her. Yeah. Come on. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah, less than 2%. It's pretty incredible right there. So, I mean, I know we had Christina Z been here early this year, and she talked about uh, going to unreached people groups. And so I just want to let you know it's happening. They're, we're doing it. We're sending people. And a lot of the churches that are going to be planted are going to places that have never heard the gospel before. And it's going to be amazing. So um, thank you for those of you who prayed, those of you who gave, and those of you who sewed into it. Um, I was cracking up at Bro Drew. I'm like, you just went three months ago, and the Lord's already bringing you back. So um, I just want to encourage you, too, and we've said it before, but if you don't have your passport yet, get your passport ready. Just be ready for what God wants to do, uh, where God wants to send you, what opportunities are going to come up, because I believe there's going to be more and more. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray for another church here in our city. And we do this every week. So this is your first time. We take time every week to pray for a different church in our city or our region because we want them to be blessed. We want them to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we want to see God move not only in our church, but in every church in the area. Amen. 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 So I'm going to pray right now for the First Congregational Church. Stretch out your hands with me this morning. Lord, right now, we just bless the First Congregational Church. Father God, we declare right now that you are doing a new thing in their midst, Father God. Lord, that there is new life that is being released, Father. And Lord, we declare that any desert season they have had is over right now. We just declare that there is a river of life that is being released into their congregation for what you are calling them to do. We bless our brothers and sisters right now, and we ask that you would pour out your love your grace and your mercy upon them. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Everyone have a good Easter? Woo! You know, I'm going to tell you what, I got to see the competitive side of my child come out this Easter that I've never seen on that level, and it was, it was beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. Um, so he is. It's, it's biological. I blame, my, blame myself. Um, but I just want to say thank you to, um, to Nathan, to Victoria, to Don for preaching uh, these last three weeks. They all did a phenomenal job. And today I'm going to finish up our series on building. We're going to kind of wrap it up here before we move on to the next thing. Because we've been in this series on building, not only in the sense of that we are physically working on our building down below, but also how are we building the people God is bringing? How are we building even personally of ourselves, of what God is calling us to do? Because we are all builders. We are all called to build the kingdom of God. So I'm getting a little ring. Am I getting an echo here on it, or is it just me who's hearing it? Um, so um, Nathan did a phenomenal job a few weeks ago. He talked about uh, the king, kingdom-minded people build with eternity in mind, um, which was phenomenal. It was three weeks ago. If you didn't hear it, you should go hear it. He talked about Nehemiah getting the word and being discouraged to even start um, and how we are open-handed with everything that we're building. He even made a crazy comment about us putting animals in the wholeness center if the Lord asked us to do it. If you weren't here, you should go listen to it. I'm not planning on opening up a zoo, but you know the Lord has, has his way, right? Um, and then the following week, Victoria came. She talked about potential, right, and the exist, existing impossibility and how we're capable of development into actuality um, and that we're called to do with your life what he gave for your life for. Um, she went over the story of the talents, kind of broke it down verse by verse and talked about how while we don't all have the same talents, we're all called to still use them and steward them for the Lord. Amen? Come on. It was great. It was awesome. Um, and she hit things like comparison, right? How lies, fear, and gratitude, she said, are the devil's love language. Um, if I just had what that person had, I could do more. Talked about how comparison can be a killer. And then finally, uh, Two weeks ago, Don talked about building on the foundation of the apostles and prophets and how we're building on the foundation Jesus laid. 
Um, he talked about how the foundation is the most beautiful part of the building, but it's so important. Most of us don't call people over to come look at the foundation of our house. I've never done that. I've never had somebody over and said, let's just go in the backyard and like dig a little bit and look at that beautiful piece of cement that's under there. No, no, no. You, you take them in to see the finished product, but we know that without the foundation, there would be no finished product, right? And how when we are building on the, as found, on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus as our chief cornerstone, and he also talked about how you are living stones that God has placed. Where has he placed you? What has he called you to do? Um, and so we're going to kind of wrap up this idea of building. You can open in your Bibles to James chapter 4 this morning. If you do not have your Bible with you, we will have the scriptures up there for you. Um, and, and I'm going to kind of just, like I said, wrap this up with some of these thoughts and everything. But I wanted to build upon the idea that Nathan brought about building with, with the uh, perspective of eternity, building uh, in eternity, because we are called to be kingdom-minded people. We are called to be a kingdom-minded church. Right? We're, we're called to partner with God to see his kingdom released. That is our vision statement. And so being a kingdom-minded people means, like Nathan told us, we have this mind that is set upon eternity because God's kingdom is eternal. Right? Oh, guys. Wow. Okay. How much review do I need? Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Y'all waking up still. I get you. I get you. Um, so James 4.4, 4, 4, I'm going to start in verse 13. Um, but we often have a short view on building. And Nathan hit this, but I, I want to hit it a little bit and talk to you really about perspective when it comes to building. Is what I, I want to focus on right now. Because your perspective is so important when we're having this discussion about what God has called us to build and what we are building. Your perspective will influence how you act, the things you say, the things you believe, and the things you do. And we need to have a perspective as a people that's based in faith. That's based in the word of God and what God has said, what God has called us to do. And we all know that our life here on earth is a limited thing. And, and James does such a beautiful job of talking about that. But while my life here on earth may be just a blink or a moment, I also know that I have eternal life through Christ Jesus. That when Jesus died upon the cross, when he gave his life, when he paid the price, when he was a substitution for my sins, I now get to enter into the eternal life that is promised to me. And so now I actually have to change my mindset from a temporal mindset to an eternal mindset. And so James 4 kind of even highlights a piece of this when he says, look here, you who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Woo, James, come on. It's coming in, right? Once, you know. Not many of us would go up to someone and say it just like that. I, I love the book of James. It's phenomenal. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. All right, church is over. We're all good. That, that, that will last you at least till next week, I think, right there. But the, the fascinating thing about James is that he rebukes in people, right? He rebukes in people the kind of heart that lives and makes its plans apart from the constant awareness of the hand of God. And with an underestimation of our own limits. You see, James does not discourage you from planning, but he actually says that when you plan, you need to make sure you are planning with the hand of God, with the calling of God. Because while your life may seem like a vapor, when you partner with an eternal God, it changes how you plan. You following me? Okay, we're, we're going to go a little deeper into this here. Because the thing is, is that when we are called to build, when we are called to steward, when we're called to see the kingdom of God expand, we do all of that with this perspective that's not limited to merely my own life. And this is one of the most uh, difficult things to work through. I was actually listening to this guy talk, um, or I was having a conversation with someone, and I didn't write it down well enough in my notes to remember who it was. If it was someone in this room, God bless you. You can come tell me. I'll give you credit next week. Um, but they were talking about how the church movement in China, everything they've been doing and building, they are doing so with a 500-year mindset, right? That, that the church in China has been building with a 500-year vision. 
That, that, wow. Right? Because that tells me something. First off, that tells me that they've understood this long term, this longevity that we are actually called to live in. Right? And it also lets me know that they have moved beyond the place of just selfishly only focusing on themselves. Because here's the thing, when we don't build with an internal mindset, what we often do is we focus more on us. Because here's the thing, if I'm partnering with God for eternity, it's not just about me, it's now about the future. It's about the kingdom. It's not just about me and my kids, it's about the next generation. You see, there's this mindset shift we need to do when we're talking about building, where we move from the place where it's only about here, and instead it's about, okay, I'm partnering with heaven to see the kingdom of God come. I know the kingdom is going to be without end. So everything I do is not just for this moment, it's for eternity. You follow me? All right. So it's for eternity. Here's the thing. If you only had a day to live, would you live with purpose or would you throw that day away? Of course you would do something with that, right? But most people don't live with purpose for their life. If you only had a day to live, how would you change from how you're going to live tomorrow? Because I don't think you would just throw it away, right? I mean, I would go and spend time with my children, with my wife. I would, do, I would call the people I love. I would probably have a level of boldness that would frighten most people if I only had a day to live. Right? I mean, let's just be real. I I ain't going to be holding back. Right? I'm not going to be shy about what I feel like the truth is. Right? It it would literally change how I lived. Right? You follow me on that? Here's the thing, right? I think a lot of humanity is fascinated with this idea. There's TV shows about it, movies about it, about what people do when they only have so much time. But life is all about perspective. If I hold a short-term perspective for my life, My influence and effect will only go as far as I can see. And I will limit my choices through a limited perspective. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about partnering with eternity, having this mindset of eternity. If I only view my life as this moment, as this week, as this next year, my decisions will be trapped inside of that box. But when I partner with the hand of God and I go, okay, Lord, my life may only be a vapor. It may be like the morning fog. But when I partner with you, with the hand of God for what you're saying and doing, I can take my perspective outside of a moment into the eternal. How would your decisions change if you partner not just for the now, but for eternity? Would you be more willing to witness to people and be honest about who Jesus is? Here's the, even, the, I think, the larger side of it. If life is truly about this perspective, like I said, right, I, I think it would affect not only how I lived, I think it would affect how I prayed. Am I praying in this or am I praying from heaven for this? Right? And we know that Jesus actually even highlighted this because in Matthew 6, when, the disciple, when he's teaching the disciples how to pray, he actually does this, right? He says, whoa, that's a little hard to read. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food that we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. You see, even Jesus is beginning, go back to the the very first slide of that. Even when he's teaching them how to pray, he says, our Father in heaven. Right there. That that is two different distinctions about eternity. Our Father, who is an eternal God, who always was and always is and always will be. And then heaven, an eternal place. You see, Jesus even teaches his disciples to pray with this mindset and this idea, not just on the moment only, but partner with heaven for eternity. And he doesn't downplay the importance of what you're going through, because even then he tells us to ask, give us this day our daily bread. So he cares about where I am at. He cares about this moment. He cares where I am. But my prayers do not stay in this moment. They stay with him in heaven, and I partner with him from heavenly places to release heaven upon earth. How would you pray differently 
if you are partnering with eternity? Do you just pray for your kids? Do you pray for your kids' kids? Your kids' 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 kids? Your kids' 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 kids. I, I know a lot of us pray for our kids and our grandkids. I think if you had an eternal mindset, you'd be praying for generations. I think if we had an eternal mindset, it would change our ability to endure hardship that we know comes with life. John 16, right, tells us that, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. How many of you have ever had a trial or sorrow in your life? Come on. You know, my, my poor four-year-old, he acts like he has a trial and sorrow every time I get him out of bed. God bless him, right? When we can't decide what to eat in the morning, right? Like, we will have trials and sorrows. Here's the thing. When I walk into a trial and sorrow with a narrow perspective only of the temporal of the moment, it can become all-consuming. We've all been there, right? Some of you have even probably had trials in this last week that literally consumed all of your, th- I mean, everything was about what was going on. And that's very humanistic. That's very normal for us as humans. But here's the thing. When I invite the kingdom of God, when I invite Jesus to step into that moment, it changes my perspective from that this is an all-consuming thing to this is just a moment in eternity. How would you walk through things differently if you viewed them as just a moment in eternity instead of an all-consuming thing? It would change your perspective entirely of how you prayed, of what you believed God could do, of what you believed he would move through. Here's the other thing about it, too. I believe that forgiveness would change for a lot of us if we understood forgiveness from the mindset of eternity. That one's a little less comfortable, I know. But, but here's the thing, right? Forgiveness from the mindset of eternity. When, when you live from an eternal expression, forgiveness and offense change because instead of keeping you... Here, I'm going to say it again. Unforgiveness, right, keeps you focused on what was instead of what God wants to do. All right? And when we get trapped into these places of unforgiveness, we're focused on the past or the moment, on what was or what is. While when I partner with God for eternity, it lets me see everything he wants to do. My offense becomes very small in the perspective of eternity. Very small. It doesn't mean the pain isn't real. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean there's not something I have to walk through, right? But here's the thing. When I partner with an eternal God, all of a sudden it becomes a little easier for me to forgive because I'm focused on eternity, not on a moment, but on the future. I think I would go so far to say that a lot of Christians hamstring themselves By living with a limited perspective instead of a kingdom one. If the kingdom is truly eternal, if I'm to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth, to pray for it, to believe for it, if I am to partner with an eternal God, I need to shift my focus to that of eternity. Easier said than done. Right? It's not always an easy thing. It's not always a simple thing. But I want to challenge you right now. That when we live from a perspective that's not a turn, uh, sorry, can't get my words out. I want to challenge us that if it means if we live from a perspective that's not eternal, we're living at a lower capacity than what we're called for. Because we're putting limits on our forgiveness, on the possibilities, on growth, and on love. I'm going to end with just, not end, end, but end this idea with this last thought that I think what is possible, yeah, sorry, I think what is possible also changes from the perspective of eternity. I think that what's possible also changes from the perspective of eternity. Because we know that we serve a God of the impossible, right? We believe we serve a God of miracles. We believe that he heals, that he saves, that he is just alive today as he was when he walked the earth 2,000 years ago, that he is moving and doing amazing things, right? When I partner with a God who is eternal, 
how I pray, how I live, what is possible in this moment changes. Because I'm not partnering with the God of a moment. I'm partnering with the God who sees all and knows all. You following me? I know this is a little more heady. This is a little more. I'm hoping some of your silence is because you're chewing, you know, not because I'm leaving you behind, right? Um, (coughs) Because I'm not trying to. Mm -hmm. I think that where we're going as a church and the things that we're doing, I want to make sure that we're always having an eternal perspective. You see, when we're talking about building the wholeness center, we're not just building something for us. We're not just building something for our kids. We're building something that I believe is going to have long-lasting effect, not only here, but also throughout the world. I believe people are going to come. They're going to be healed. They're going to be saved. They're going to encounter the love of Jesus, and they are going to go, and it's going to affect them and their kids and their kids and their kids. You see, when I partner with the, this, the eternal God, when I have an eternal perspective, it actually even builds up my faith. For what God can do. Because even when I sow a small seed, even when I do something that's little, I know that in the prospect of eternity, God can take a small seed and make it grow. Never despise the small thing. Because in the picture of eternity, it can ripple out like you have you don't even know. Right? Yeah, come on. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just mm, wanna make sure you're, you're grasping this. So we build with the kingdom. We build with an eternal mindset, this eternal perspective. And here's the last thing I'm going to say about this idea. When I'm building with eternity in mind, right, I I do it when I'm trying to do it right now with every aspect of my life. I'm going to give you a very simple example, but hopefully it will help you grasp this. Not only do I try to do it when I'm praying, I'm even trying to do it with how I raise my children. All right, so I'm talking even on the practical side of it. I felt like the Lord was challenging me the other day um, because our, our wonderful son was, was challenging me. And he was being, he was being his wonderful four-year-old self, right? He was having an opinion about something and decided to throw a fit, you know, and God bless him. Um, I just, <laughs> it was just one of those days. You know, when you're tired, you're already kind of stressed, you're over everything, and, and you're just in this moment with your child and you're trying to be like, I'm trying to help you, you know, like, listen to me. I, I, just, I know how God feels sometimes. I bet he's up there shaking me. I'm trying to help you listen, right? And so I, I, I'm in this moment, and I'm trying to love my child and discipline my child. And, and I felt like God actually was challenging me in this moment with him because I felt like God was telling me, uh, right now, what you're trying to do, right? Are you dealing with this, from this, 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 um, in this moment, or are you dealing with the idea of eternity? Because what you're doing right now, if, if I'm focusing on just dealing with this problem in this moment, instead of with the idea that what I'm doing is leading him towards the Lord, that everything I'm doing with him right now is not just because of an outburst. It's because I know the callings of God upon his life. It's because I know that God loves my child, that God has a plan for my child. And so I don't look at discipline as a mere moment or I'm not... I'm not issue-driven in it, right? I'm not like, we just got to deal with this issue. No, I'm saying that by me disciplining you, I'm going to partner with the Spirit of God because I know that what I'm doing is going to lead you to the Father. I know that what I am doing right now is going to point you to Him. And by me pointing you to Him, your kids are going to be pointed to Him as well. By me pointing you to Him, your children and everyone they encounter is going to hear about the love of God. Right? You see, an eternal mindset is not an issue-driven mindset. Do we talk about issues? Yes, that is important. But we're not driven by even issues that are around us because I partner with heaven in order to see a long-term effect happen. Do you understand that? How I'm disciplining my child is even shifting in my mindset a little bit because it's not just about the struggle in the moment. And, And that's, once again, it's a really easy thing to stand up here and say, all right? In the moment when your child is screaming and having a meltdown, come on, parents, right? We all know. It's a little different, right? You're praying in tongues like you've never prayed in tongues before. You're, you're believing that, you know, something's going to happen. But let's even go further with that, right? That means with my finances, right? I am not just focused on the now with my finances. I want to partner with heaven for every dollar that comes into my hand. God, when I sow this, you're going to do something. When you tell me to give, to be generous, to be extravagant, 
What seed am I planting for the future? For my job and my coworkers, my interactions with them are not just about what's happening. I'm actually going to partner with heaven, have an eternal mindset that what I'm doing at my work is sowing seeds for their future. Right. Are you following me here? Okay. <laughs> Good. I hope not. If not, it's on YouTube. You can go watch it again, you know. If, I, if I'm really missing it, I'll have someone else make, make some more sense with it. So, so this whole idea, that this is what we're doing. We're building from eternity, right? The last thing I want to look at here is Nehemiah. And Nathan talked about the beginning of Nehemiah a little bit. I'm going to go a little later into Nehemiah 4. So you can turn in your Bibles right now to Nehemiah 4 because the other thing that we're doing is when I'm building with this eternal perspective, this eternal mindset, challenges do come along the way, right? And we read even that scripture right in 1 John. We know that there are trials and tribulations. We know that things can come against you when you are being faithful to build and do what God has called you to do. Nehemiah, I'm going to say it again, it's verse four, uh, chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse 6, and we're going to kind of jump around there a little bit. Um, but in what we're doing right now, and what we're building down below, and what we feel like God is calling us to do to build as individuals and in our families, right? I, I was finding so much encouragement in Nehemiah. <clears throat> so let's read this right now. At, the, at last the wall was completed to half its height, around the entire city, for the people had worked with enthusiasm. But when Sunbalat and Tobiah and the Arabs, Ammonites and Ashodites, heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. Then the people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired, and there is so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. The Jews who lived near the enemy came and told us again and again, they will come from all directions and attack us. So I placed armed guards, I being Nehemiah, behind the lowest parts of the wall in the exposed areas. I stationed people to stand guard by families armed with swords, spears, and bows. Then as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. When our enemies heard that we knew of their plans and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to our work on the wall. But from then on, only half my men worked while the other half stood guard with spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. The leaders stationed themselves behind the people of Judah who were building the wall. The laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their load and one hand holding a weapon. All the builders had a sword belted to their side. The trumpeters stayed with me to sound the alarm. Then I explained to the nobles and officials and all the people, the work is very spread out and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. When you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever it is, uh, where it is sounding, then our God will fight for us. We worked early and late from sunrise to sunset, and half the men were always on guard. I also told everyone living outside the walls to stay in Jerusalem. That way, they and their servants could help with the guard duty at night and work during the day. During this time, none of us, not I, nor my relatives, nor my servants, nor the guards who were with me ever took off our clothes. We carried our weapons with us at all times, even when we went for water. So many things in there. I'm just going to pull out a couple things I really felt like the Lord was highlighting to us. Um, and I was really thinking, have you ever had a moment where you've thought, this is harder than I thought it would be? Because I think the interesting thing is that in the beginning, and earlier in this chapter, uh, and I think it's verse 4, the, what the enemy did was the enemy sowed confusion. And that's what they did. And Nehemiah even says they're trying to confuse us. That in the beginning, when they were starting out, the enemy came with confusion. And then when they were halfway there, which is so interesting to me, halfway there, then the enemy came ready to attack with swords and with weapons. I want to encourage you right now that as we're talking about building, as we're having an eternal perspective on what we're doing, often the enemy doesn't come at you just at the beginning. He also comes at you when you feel like you've made progress and you're partway there. The enemy doesn't just come and attack you when you feel like, oh, now I've got this off the ground and I'm moving. It's just going to be easy from here. 
No. So often when the attacks of the devil come, when we feel ourselves getting beaten down, we feel like God has called us to do something. We fight through the confusion in the beginning and we begin to be faithful and do it. And then on the journey, on the progress, something else comes and wears us down. I want to encourage you, that is the time to fight, not to give up. Because what we actually see happen here, and I'm going to give it to you right here. Uh, verse 6. You can jump back to verse 6 for me, Lisa. Thank you so much for doing everything. At last, the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city. For the people have worked with enthusiasm. What's more, the people were enthusiastic. They were excited about what they were doing. Have you ever been building something? God's called you to do something. You're being faithful in what you're doing, and you begin to feel excited, then that's normal. That's okay. That is not the end. What that means then is you're actually entering into a time where you need to fight, where you need to stand up. And this is what Nehemiah does, right? The first thing he does, you want to jump to the next verse for me here? The next one. Oh, sorry, I didn't write it down. I can't remember. I'm just going to read it. Um, then what Nehemiah does is he prays. His first response was to pray first, then prepare to fight. But we pray to our God and guard to the city day and night to protect ourselves. Prayer is your first weapon. When we're talking about building, when we're talking about the perspective that we're having, prayer is always your first weapon, right? You pray first. And then you move into what God has called you to do. You see, Nehemiah understood the need for the hand of the Lord. It, it makes me think of Proverbs 16, 9, right? How we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Right? This is what we're seeing in this right now. They could have stopped halfway. They could have stopped halfway. They could have said, we made some progress. I did something. Halfway is better than no way, none at all. I mean, come on, we've all been there, I think, ourselves, right? Well, I tried. I did my, you know, I really just want to encourage you right now. With where I feel like God is taking us as a church, we can't stop halfway. With where I feel like we're, what we're called to build and sow into. When I'm talking about the wholeness center, when, when we're looking at the ministries of Life Church, when we're talking about uh, Tomorrow's Champions Academy, the um, elementary school that's exploding here, there are so many things happening here. None of them can be stopped halfway. None of them can be stopped just because we hear that the enemy is coming. Because here's the thing, too I think the enemy loves to attack our assignments to build. And Nehemiah, what does he do? He releases a prophetic word in verse 14. Right? He releases this prophetic word. And it says, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Nehemiah had this generational perspective that I think was tied to eternity. Because he knew they weren't just building for them in this moment. They were fighting for the future of Jerusalem. When God gives you an assignment to build, to do something, I want to encourage you right now, you don't stop halfway. Sometimes I think what you need to do <laughs> is, I'm going I'm to read this. I want to make sure I say this right. You, you, we need to understand that sometimes the strategy needs to be adjusted, but the vision never changed. The strategy needs to be adjusted, but the vision has not changed. Because what do we see happen for them, right? In verse 23, it says, During this time, none of us, not I, nor my relatives, nor my servants, nor the guards who were with me, Eve ever took off our clothes. We carried our weapons with us at all times, even when we went for water. We even read the verse, right, where they built, right? They were building with one hand, and they had a weapon in the other hand. Did that possibly slow things down? Yes. Have you ever tried to build with one hand? Usually I'm holding a toddler in the other hand, you know, but it slows things down, right? It wasn't that the vision had changed, but their strategy had to change in the season they were in. I want to encourage you right now if you're going through something. I want to encourage you right now if you feel like something is attacking the assignment the Lord has given you. It's not that your vision needs to change. It's that your strategy needs to change. Maybe you build in one hand and fight with the other. Can you stand to your feet this morning?
Yeah, verse 17, that was the one. Oh, yeah, you already had it up there. Thanks, Lisa. With one hand supporting their load and one hand holding a weapon. You see, the fight didn't keep them from carrying out the vision. And it actually didn't even stop them from building. You know, I want to encourage you to, I think sometimes the things that come against us are supposed to distract us from the vision God has given us. So we focus all our attention on fighting and stop building. Not supposed to do that either. I I really just want to pray for some people here in this moment. I'm going to have you stay in your seat. But... As, as we're talking about this eternal perspective, as we're talking about as we build, right, we understand that we're building from this place of eternity, which means that we're focused on the vision that God has given us. If you feel, and I want to ask you to be brave and bold, if you feel like something has been coming against the vision God has given you, if you feel like something's been attacking what you're believing for, and you've been struggling to build the word that God has given you, not because of yourself, but because of what's been coming against you, can you just raise your hand right now? I wanna, we're going to release something here in this moment. If you're around a person with their hand up, we're going to do what we do. You put your hand on the person's shoulder who's around you right now. I want you to lay hands on them. And I'm going to release this word right now. I'm going to release faith right now for you because I believe this is a word for us as a church. I still got someone right back here who needs someone to have a hand on their shoulder. If you see someone without a hand on their shoulder, move to them, put a hand on their shoulder. Come on, right now. So I want you to pray with me. And we're going to declare right now strategies right, for the season, that the vision is not changed, but the strategies are going to adjust towards what you are facing. So right now, we declare, Holy Spirit, that you are releasing heavenly strategies to these people. God, we thank you for the people who are called to build. We thank you for the assignments that you have given them. And we declare right now that their focus is shifting from a temporal perspective, from a right here perspective, into an eternal perspective. That they are going to pray from a place of eternity. They are going to partner with you from a place of eternity. And what you have called them to do is not going to be stopped by confusion. So we break off confusion right now in the name of Jesus. I break off any lies of the enemy that have been trying to confuse you to slow you down. And I also come against anything right now that when you're looking at this is partway done, maybe this is good enough because of all the pushback I'm getting. We say no in the name of Jesus. We release strength right now for you. We release strength right now for you that the family of God would come around you because they also stood in families. And so right now as your brothers and sisters, we lift up your arms and we declare you are not alone in what you are building. Come on, say it over them right now, people. You are not alone in what you are building. You are not alone in what you are building. Come on, I feel like I'm supposed to break something off right now. So right now we break off the spirit of isolation. We break off the spirit that is the lies of the enemy telling you that you are alone. I, I just feel like that's a lie right now that some of you have really been dealing with that, that I am by myself in this. In the name of Jesus, we say no to that lie. We declare that your brothers and sisters right now who are around you are lifting you up. You are not alone in this. Come on. And so right now we release the truth that when you were adopted, when Jesus paid the price, you were adopted into a family. You have brothers and sisters in Christ. You are not called to be walking by yourself but surrounded by those who are with you. Because just like it tells us in Ecclesiastes, right? Two are better than one. There's a better return for their labor, and if one should fall, the other is there to pick them up. We just declare that right now. Name of Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, that wasn't planned, but I just felt the Holy Spirit moving on that one. Um, Prayer teams, I'm going to invite you up right now. I want to encourage you that if you need some more prayer this morning, if you want prayer either for what I've been talking about or if you would like also prayer for healing, we're going to have people up here who want to minister to you. Church, listen, I know, I'm sorry. You're a little distracted right now because I kind of gave you some freedom and now we're, woo, that's where the spirit of the Lord is, right? We're all going to run. This will be great. I I want to encourage you right now. If you need prayer for anything, come get prayer, right? Where two or more are gathered, there the spirit of the Lord is as well. Do not even be laboring in prayer alone. Come forward. We're going to have people here who want to labor with you for what God is doing in your life. Amen? Amen. There is no prayer request too small. There is nothing too small. So we're going to have the healing prayer chairs over here. And we're also going to have prayer people just lined up. I want a few more prayer teams. I want a few more people who are going to be here ready just to pray and bless you. I'm going to invite Cheryl just to come up here right now. And she's going to close us out um, as we leave.
Praise the Lord. Good word, as always. I love that power of forgiveness. I don't know if you caught it during that service, but there's power in that. There's some um, announcements you need to remember. Family camp booking will be in the back in the featured area. And if you want to join the healing prayer team, they're looking for volunteers, and they will also be in the back. And if you want to sign up for the Intro to Worship with Movement and Flags workshop, they will also be in the featured area. Now, it's important to testify. Someone came last week and attended the prophetic sessions before service. She had a headache, and during this session, it left. So you, if anyone out there who has headaches, they don't just, whoops, that's a miracle from God. She felt the peace of God and she, as she was being ministered to as well. Now, if you're a first-time visitor here at Life Church, please join my husband, Bro Drew, in the back and get a gift that we have for you for coming today. Are we going to all now think with an internal perspective and fight and not give up when we know we're following that vision that God has given us? Let that be what you think about and ponder this week. Father, we thank you for this service. I pray that every word spoken today has fallen on good soil and will grow Woo. and visions people are going to have visions and dreams i'm so excited what's going to happen but blessings on you for this week keep your head up keep an eternal perspective don't give up keep fighting for your future and for your those who come after you your children your great grandchildren oh god is so good have a blessed sunday and week in Jesus' name, amen.